Hey guys, welcome to a riveting art video. Um, so over the past couple years, I kind of took a break from making videos. I still posted them every now and then when I kind of had something to post, but I wasn't really like forcing it or like making a habit out of it. I think it's probably a better way to word it. Um, really, it boils down to the fact that the pandemic really messed with my motivation and then I just kind of fell off the, the bandwagon. You know, I let myself have a little bit of a break and then it turned into like a year long break and then before I knew it, I was working full time and just didn't have time. Um, but now I've kind of like reevaluated myself and the things that I need to do in order to stay motivated and um, on track with my art making and then in turn my video making. Uh, and I really wanted to make sure that my art making was back on track before I started getting into videos because if I was trying to make videos of my art but then my art's kind of coming sporadically then my videos would be even more sporadic. Um, so that brings me to this video. I really wanted to give some tips that I have personally learned. So all of these like tips and stuff are very specific to my way of working. So they might not work for you. So let's go ahead and get into tip number one make a schedule <laughs> i know a lot of people hate schedules you know we're all trying to do things when we want to do them and not being forced you know you get into art because you don't want to work a nine to five but that's the thing you need to understand yourself for me i'm a morning person so for me it makes sense to make say hey from nine to noon you're doing art and you better stay away from like youtube if you're a night person, then, you know, make sure you're making your schedule in the afternoon because if you're not going to be your most productive in the morning, then why make yourself work in the morning? Or say you get home from a job. number two is to avoid the YouTube hole. I assume if you're watching this you like YouTube as much as me. <laughs> um, so sometimes I, yeah, I watch a lot of art YouTubers obviously and so I'll watch an art YouTube video and I'm like oh wow like this gets me kind of you know excited to make some art. So as soon as you get that inspiration you gotta like shut down YouTube and go use that inspiration rather than being like oh this gets me inspired and then you watch another art video and then you watch another art video and before you know it your creativity quota for the day has been filled with other people's content rather than you making your own. I, that's something that I've had to really kind of figure out for myself. So my tip number three, so let's say you got yourself a schedule, you've got the motivation from maybe watching a couple YouTube videos and you stopped and now you're sitting there and you're ready to make art, but you don't know what to make art about. Um, this has really been a struggle for me recently. I feel like, I'm like, am I just getting old and all of a sudden I'm not creative anymore? Like what's going on? <laughs> like I don't have any ideas anymore. But I find that really it's not that I'm like out of ideas, it's that I'm so bogged down with my everyday stuff that sometimes I forget to think about the, the fun, imaginative things. Um, so I would highly recommend like starting your creative flow with a challenge. Like some of these challenges are a little silly because we see them, people do them on YouTube as like, you know, fun things for people to like easily click on and enjoy watching um but i find that they're actually kind of fun just to do you know in your free time when you're by yourself and you're not recording anything um one of my favorites to do is color palette sort of things like you go on to one of those color palette generators and you hit like random and it gives you 
color palette. So you can turn that color palette into a full-fledged drawing if you get inspired to, or it's just a sketch, you know? But that sketch could be a jumping point into your next drawing. Um, another one would be like, it's similar where you like close your eyes and you like pick three colored pencils out of your bag or whatever. So same thing as like color palette. I do like using the color palette generators because it's guaranteed to give you colors that go well together. You just don't know what the colors are going to be. So my number four is to experiment with a new media. For me recently, uh, my boyfriend got an iPad for school and so when he's not using it, I've been dabbling in Procreate and I actually really love it because I have like a laptop and stuff and I draw on Photoshop, but having all that at the couch or if I'm going to the library or I'm at a coffee shop, like that's just a lot of stuff to carry around and the iPad is so compact and easy. It's, it's just kind of made me excited to draw more digital art and I've been wanting to create new products for my website and most of the time when I'm doing that it's digital art. I found myself so inspired to just start making stuff, but then I fell into that art block thing. So I've been doing a lot of the color palettes and then with those color palettes, I've made some really cute things that might be coming to my store soon. So make sure to uh, follow me on Instagram for like the most current updates on items like that. My tip number five, it is literally like, it, I've, I have always known this about myself, but I've just kind of been in denial because I think by being in denial, I'm able to procrastinate more. But now that I know this tip, it's like, <laughs> no more procrastination. So tip number five is to go into public. My boyfriend didn't believe me that this was a good idea. He's all like, oh, that's kind of stupid. Like, I'm just gonna get distracted by all the people, uh, you know, to go to a coffee shop, go to library, right? I was like, look, we can get Starbucks, you know, give it a good old 30 minute college try and see how much stuff you get done while we're there. And he was like, you know what? I want Starbucks, so sure. And lo and behold, next thing I knew, we were there for like two hours, two and a half hours maybe. And he got more work done in that two and a half hours than he would have gotten at two and a half hours at home on his computer. So, you know, and I designed a whole bookmark because I want to sell bookmarks. <laughs> There's something about like, when you're at home, you can stand up, go play with your aunt pets, you know, your cats or your dogs. Oh, let me come over here to the TV where there's like a thing, you know. Oh, let me dig in the fridge for the fifth time and not get anything out of it. But when you're at the library, like, you can't, there's really nothing you can do. And also, like, he likes to watch videos and stuff while he works. So when he's at home, he has two monitors. So his, like, Twitch stream that he's watching is the same size as his Word document he has open. But when we go to these locations, the Word document is just the size of his screen and then his Twitch stream is on his phone. So there's a very literal prioritization of screen size that helps your brain be like, okay, smaller screen, less priority. Big screen, big priority. So it, while it works for schoolwork, it also works for your art and make sure you get things done. And when I was doing YouTube videos before, I was always editing at home because I didn't have the tech that I do have now. now. And now I have a good laptop, like an actually good laptop <laughs> and the iPad and stuff. So now I can actually work on these videos at the library and stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to get more stuff done in a more productive way. All right, so those were my five tips. I hope you enjoyed them. I am in grad school now, so I am definitely busy, but busy in a different way than working a full-time job. Full-time jobs are exhausting, <laughs> but I mean, I guess school is too, but it's like in a fun way. I love school, but I hopefully I can make some content around being a grad student, you know, some studio vlogs, you know, let you guys 
see what's up a week in the life of a grad student i actually recorded a week in the life of a grad student this past spring a bunch of the footage got corrupt so that sucked <laughs> hope to see you guys in future videos i already have another one you know in the works and it's a series of videos that i'm kind of excited to keep doing so hopefully you guys subscribe and see you around